Welcome everybody. I appreciate you making time on this lovely afternoon to join us. I know there's so many other things you could be doing with your time tonight. I hope to really enlighten you and give you a lot of new ways of looking at things, some new questions to have answered. And uh, we're talking about the truth about hormones, aging, and heart disease. I'm not sure if you know that more women die of heart disease than breast cancer. Yet, I think it's pretty much out there that everyone's talking about breast cancer. And I always think, but why? Did you know that there's something that heart disease and breast cancer have in common, though? Are you wondering what that is? See, this is where functional medicine comes in. Functional medicine looks at the root cause of what is wrong. And the actual fact is, heart disease and breast cancer are immune system dysfunction. And I'm going to get more into that as we go by. Um, so who am I and what do I do? I'm very pleased to be an accredited integrative medicine physician by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta. And why is this important? Because I spend a lot of time educating myself in this field. Functional and regenerative medicine is a board certified specialty in the United States. Right alongside internal medicine, surgery, family practice, and I don't think that we recognize that here in Canada in our traditional medical system. Let's get into who I am and why do I do what I do. I wanted to be a doctor since I was 11. And it's a very interesting story that at the ripe old age of 16, I decided that it would take too long to become a doctor. So I applied to engineering school, got this amazing scholarship, and at the last moment decided that... <sighs> This is not what I want to do with my life. I want to be a doctor. I want to change people's lives. I want to enhance them. I want to make them better than ever. And as universe or God would have it, everything shifted into place. I got accepted at medical school. I finished my time in medical school. And I thought, wow, a dream has come true. I'm here, I'm a doctor. And I wasn't with direction. I felt like, what am I actually going to do? Because there's different specialties. And I started to rotate through different specialties, trying to figure out where is my purpose going to be fulfilled. I tried pediatrics, time in orthopedics, time in obstetrics and gynecology. And Really, I still felt lost. And again, as the universe would have it, this opportunity in Canada came about where I could leave all the stress and the violence and the crime of South Africa to move to Canada and have everything come together. Uh, pretty amazing, actually. The um, career I had, I could use everything. I looked after people who were pregnant. I delivered babies. And I looked after people as they were dying. I looked after families. I looked after everyone within the family. And I could use my experience in all of the different disciplines. So really, I was, here I am, 29 years old, in the prime of my life. And truly, what I thought was the perfect career. Then I met the man of my dreams. I had this beautiful home. I had no financial worries. I had nothing. I had nothing to worry about. Small little glitch.
Yeah. Okay, so our technical glitch is a little bit uh, of an interruption, but here we are. So, you know, just sharing with you where I was, and, and, and I truly, truly was happy, fulfilled, satisfied, or so I thought. And I didn't know it was possible that dreams could come true, but that's how I felt. And then one day I woke up and, OMG, have you ever had that feeling? I thought, what on earth happened to me? I looked in the mirror and there I was, five sizes bigger than I used to be. My clothes didn't fit. <sighs> you know, no exercise worked. And I, I think you are all familiar with this saying, eat less, exercise more, because it's all about calories in versus calories out. And let me tell you that that does not work. I found out firsthand. I didn't like looking in the mirror. I had these bags under my eyes. My skin looked old and tired and it had lost its radiance. I was in pain all the time. It was so difficult to function. I had uh, 15 migraines a month, if you can imagine. Like every single part of me hurt every single day. And the most frustrating thing was my tests were all normal. Can you relate to that, not feeling well? And then finding out that there's nothing wrong with you? See, for me, I just woke up one day and everything was different. I didn't notice the shift into that state. Now, whether you have that or you have subtle changes and you just notice that you might be a little bit more tired than you used to be. Maybe your mood isn't quite what it used to be. Maybe your memory or your mind isn't as sharp and crisp as it used to be. Whatever it is, have you got things going on? that you'd like to solve, but nothing explains it. That's what functional medicine does. Functional medicine looks at you, exactly where you are, and finds out what is it that's going on. Who are some of the people that we see? One of the biggest things I see on a day-to-day -day basis in my practice here in Calgary is obesity. I have people coming in saying, I've tried everything. I have tried every single diet I've been on, every program from injections to you name it, they've tried it. And it might work temporarily, and then it all comes back again. So in functional medicine, we look at hormones of metabolism. If eating less and exercising more were all you needed, you'd be as skinny as you needed as you wanted to be, right? So the fact of the matter is there is so much more. Now, I learned about hormones in medical school. I just didn't learn about them to the degree that I study today. I'm looking at current science, all the new advances. Did you know there's a new hormone called irisin that's been discovered in the last few years? Check it out. But certainly it's not coming up in the day-to-day -day medical training and ways we work with patients. Um, but cortisol, insulin, thyroid, these are hormones that work together to control fat burning and fat storage. And when there's a mismatch of any one of them, it impacts whether you can store fat or burn fat. New in the news, in the scientific literature now, we know that there's genes that can tell us about what your body prefers uh, as far as nutrition goes. What should you eat? Now, I'm not talking about eating for your blood type. I'm talking about looking at your genes. We know that stress affects your weight. Brain chemistry affects your weight. There are other things that lead to cravings other than just willpower. In fact, my physician partner and our director of medical education says willpower is overrated. So I'll let you know that in our programs and in our day-to-day -day working with patients, 
we help you with all of this so you don't have to feel frustrated at not having willpower. There's always a reason. So here's an interesting something to look at. Obesity is second only to smoking as a cause of premature death. Now, how is traditional medicine helping patients lose weight? Really not. I mean, you can do behavioral training, big deal. If you have brain chemistry imbalances, how is that going to help you? I just told a patient today, I said, you know, when you're biochemically and hormonally imbalanced, it's going to be really difficult for you to make a decision and stick to it. It's going to be difficult for you to um, have willpower because you just don't feel good. So how about we start with the basics and put all these things right and then look at how strong your willpower is because then it's easier. So what the study that I'm showing you came up with is overweight and obesity are associated with a significantly increased risk of premature death, particularly among men, with the effects seen across Europe, North America, East Asia, Australia, and New Zealand, and confirms an individual participant data meta-analysis. So in essence, let's leave all of the details out and say that one in six people died prematurely because of weight, not smoking or other bad habits. And as you might already know firsthand, this is one of the most difficult things to achieve, an ideal body weight and have lasting results. So through functional medicine, I will help you achieve lasting results. When your body is back in balance, everything works better. I have one very favorite saying, everything is connected to everything else. So stay posted because I'm going to show you how. Here's another category of patients I see on a daily basis, fatigue. Now, when I did family practice, I ran a thyroid test, I ran a sugar test, uh, blood sugar level, and I ran an iron test, and I said, oh, these are all normal, so I don't know why you're tired. In functional medicine, we look at micronutrients, so not just your sugar. We're looking at nutrients like coenzyme Q10, magnesium, all the things that feed your energy cycle. We look at all the things that block your energy cycle. We look at mitochondria, the cell powerhouses that create energy. There are toxins and heavy metals and other things that gum up works of the mitochondria. And until we get down to that nitty gritty, you don't feel any better. Hormones like thyroid hormone, cortisol, even insulin and your blood sugar levels. Stress affects your energy. And then there are things that block hormone receptors. So you could have everything you need and it still doesn't work. I think you already know this. So see how much in depth we go in functional and regenerative medicine. Other categories of patients I see are, doc, I have a family. I've worked so hard and I want to be around for them. These are people who get that they're sacrificing their health for their wealth and now they want to reverse it. Doc, I feel okay, but I don't want to get sick. These are patients who have a family history of something or they're aware of the current health epidemics. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you live to age 80, you have a 50% risk of dementia. So it means flip a coin and that's what's going to happen. You're either going to get it or not. Prostate cancer is rising, breast cancer is rising, heart attacks are rising. All kinds of chronic illness and disease are rising. And it's hard to avoid when there's a run to cure cancer or colon cancer or colitis or whatever it is. But you can, you can see it all around you. And many people know that they don't want to get these things. Of course, there's this category of patient. Doc, I heard you can safely prescribe testosterone and help me be on top of my game. Uh, yes, a lot of people abuse steroids. They're easily available underground. The fact of the matter is this. 
Hormones by themselves are not safe. You could take testosterone and create liver cancer. Your body could take testosterone and create breast and prostate cancer. Yes, if you're a man, you can still get breast cancer because 3% of breast cancer occurs in men. Oh, and here's a common one. I heard you specialize in hormones and I read that this must be my problem. And then finally, there's these categories here. I've seen 16 doctors and no one can help me feel better. But, but I have all of these symptoms and they list them. Uh, patients who have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome who've read that functional medicine can help reverse these things. Um, I have Gina, uh, a lady who's 75 and happy to tell her story. She had fibromyalgia chronic fatigue syndrome had to stop working as a psychologist okay first she was a, a, a pharmacist and then at the age of 58 became a psychologist with a master's degree in psychology and she practiced but her fibromyalgia got the better of her the brain fog the depression the physical incapacity and soon found herself on the chesterfield as she talks about it um, and through our program in functional medicine at 75 years old, Gina is getting her license back to practice psychology. Like, how amazing is that? So age is just a number. You get to choose how you feel. You get to choose how you function. And functional medicine is the root to all of that. Then there are patients with multiple chemical sensitivities, patients with depression not responding to their medication, or they have side effects of the medication. Um, and then the category of my tests are all normal, but I'm not, which I was in, and I'm sure many of you can relate to as well. Through functional medicine, we help you feel younger, and then we help you look younger. So functional and regenerative medicine. It's a natural approach to reversing the visible signs of aging. So the Non-visible signs are how you're feeling, and then the visible signs are what you're seeing in the mirror, like I did, the bags, the dull skin, the hair falling out, all of those things. So on August 30th, save the date, um, we're sharing with you all of the details on how to look younger once you feel younger, or how to get both together. So what is functional and regenerative medicine? We optimize physiology. We restore your body back to its best function. It's about finding the root cause of what is wrong. We regenerate through science and biochemistry. Let's take, for example, heartburn. Heartburn is a really common thing, and I'm pretty sure all of you have had that at some point in your life. Um, classic thing. I need some Tums. I need to take some Pepto-Bismol or whatever it is. Now, when you go to a family doctor for heartburn, what do you get? You get something called a proton pump inhibitor or, or you know, Zantac or Nexium or something like that. So what do these medicines do? They're made to lower stomach acid. Now, in functional medicine, we will say are there any other causes? And yes, if you have a lot of acid, the question is why? But in functional medicine, we know that heartburn can come from having too low stomach acid. Bet she didn't know that. So high stomach acid, low stomach acid, and food sensitivities can also lead to heartburn. So taking a pill that lowers stomach acid might not be the best thing for you to do. In fact, I'll tell you this, it is not the best thing for you to do. If you've ever read the package insert of one of these things, what does it say? Do not take for more than 60 days. Yet, it, when I did emergency medicine, you, you'd see people on it for years and years and years. Are you surprised by this? Now, let, I, let me ask you this. Why does your stomach need acid? I mean, your body, all its wisdom is not going to make acid if it was bad for you. So what will happen when you take away the right amount of acid? Because these pills are lowering stomach acid. You're not breaking down protein into amino acids as efficiently. You're not able to absorb nutrients as efficiently. And here's something else. Your stomach acid sterilizes your small bowel. And if you take away stomach acid, you're not going to have that effect, which now leads, can lead to something called SIBO, for example, which 
I'm not going to get into it this moment. I'm going to take you back to an example of heartburn. My husband. At one point, it was so bad that we had Tums in every spot you could imagine. I'm talking every kitchen counter, in the bedroom, in the drawers, in the coat pockets, in the cars, in everywhere, because he could not do without it. Yes, he took the purple pill. Yes, he took the proton pump inhibitor. After we went and changed our lifestyle and our diet, we didn't notice that his heartburn had completely disappeared. Until one day we were out eating and the heartburn came back. And it's the first time we noticed that three years into this resolution of heartburn, he had no more heartburn. And so food sensitivities, by taking away the offending food, and for some people it could be wine, for other people it could be gluten, for some people it could be dairy, it could be anything. But think about this, just simply changing what you're eating. I had a patient yesterday who cucumbers caused heartburn. So there you go. Uh, why take a pill that can have far-reaching consequences and in fact can lead to low bone density and higher risk for osteoporosis and bone fractures and making you never able to return to your normal level of functioning? Like why do that when it's something as simple as too low, too high, or a food sensitivity? High blood pressure. Here's something else I want you to, to know. In hypertension, high blood pressure, You'll see my acronym there called HT. Uh, you, come to a family, you come to me as your family doctor. I would say, oh, your blood pressure is high. Here's a pill. In functional medicine, I'm going to say, let's look at your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. This is your fight flight response and your rest and relax response. And these two things need to be in balance. And if they're not in balance, why are they not in balance? What can we do? And this is not as simple as stress management. It could be about how your body metabolizes epinephrine and norepinephrine and the things that put you into fight-flight response. We also know that there's, through the National Institute of Health, we know that having a high body burden of lead can increase your risk for hypertension. Sorry increases your risk for cardiovascular disease by 837%. That is a phenomenal number, right? And we're busy dishing out pills to hide the symptoms but not look at the cause. And if we did chelation and removed lead, your entire system would reset and be back to normal. So 30 studies of 60,000 people Johns Hopkins Review of the Literature showed a relationship between hypertension and lead. So you can see that asking the question why is way more important than just band-aiding the symptom if you want a longer and healthier quality of life. And then the last thing I want to mention is statin drugs and cholesterol, right? Um, Everybody still talks about, is my cholesterol high? And then they're concerned if it's high and am I going to be at increased risk for heart attacks? So let's talk about what is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a molecule that is a component of your cell membranes. Cholesterol is the parent molecule of cortisol, your stress hormone. Cholesterol is the parent molecule of testosterone and estrogen and DHEA progesterone. Now, why would you want to have a below normal cholesterol? In functional medicine, my question to you when your body's cholesterol level is high is, what does that mean? In my world, it means that you have chronic viral infections, you have heavy metal toxicity, you might have liver derangements, so you might have micronutrient deficiencies, you might have thyroid hormone issues. These are all things that affect your cholesterol levels. So really, um, am I going to give you a statin drug at our first meeting and go, oh my gosh, no, I'm going to look at your immune system function. I'm going to look at all of these other things and have educational discussions with you and together we make a decision about what's next. Looking at your family history will point us to certain things in your genetics, for example. Looking at your levels of inflammation would help us understand more about what we need to look at. So it's not so simple as looking at a blood level and then throwing a drug at you.
Here's an interesting um, scientific piece of information. Statins in a person with no heart disease or symptoms. You have to treat 100 people for five years to prevent one cardiovascular event or heart attack. Is that not shocking? Well, I, I find it pretty shocking considering that we were trained to give every person with a high cholesterol a statin drug and almost none of them have a family history of heart disease or symptoms. So it's just fear mongering. And I, have you ever looked at drug side effects? So statin drugs have a very high incidence of fatigue. They come with depression and mood disorders. They come with erectile dysfunction. It's incredible how many people discontinue their drugs, even under the supervision of a heart specialist, because of the side effects. And yet we just continue to dish them out. Functional medicine definitely makes sense of it in this way, for example. This is called the steroidogenic pathway. It shows us how cholesterol downstreams into the different hormones. So you can see that cholesterol becomes cortisol. You can see that it becomes testosterone, estradiol, estrone. Now, not to confuse you, but if we go over to the left side of the screen, you can see that estrone becomes 4-OH estrone, 2-OH estrone, and then it downstreams into 2-OH estriol. All I want you to know is that is the area of metabolism where pro-cancer forming molecules can occur in that part, part of the metabolism of hormones. And I'm bringing this up because we think that we can just give you testosterone because it's been shown to manage your risk for blood sugar uh, and diabetes and, you know, testosterone is supposed to be good for andropause. Uh, but testosterone becomes estrogen, becomes all these metabolites. We think that we should just replace hormones and take estrogen. Um, I get a lot of patients coming to see me just because they want hormones. So I want you to know that cholesterol is not a bad guy. It becomes very important hormones. But even so, me just randomly throwing hormones at you can be dangerous. In functional medicine, we will look at all of these metabolites and see what is the safest and best course of action for you. And so just to summarize that hormones come, these hormones that you want because they make you feel good and they treat the symptoms that you've researched and show that you have them and hormones are the solution, um, it's not about just replacing hormones. It's about looking at the metabolism, looking at your genetics, looking at your liver, looking at how your body is going to handle them, and then whether they're going to be safe or not. And bioidentical hormones or not, they're still needing careful monitoring. What else about functional medicine should you know and, how it and why it applies to you? or will be relevant for you, or why might you want to choose functional medicine? If you look at the way I was trained, it was a sick care model. We were trained to diagnose sickness and disease. All of our interpretation of labs and the testing and everything had to do with, are you sick? And can I treat you or not? In functional medicine, we're looking at you for optimal health. We're looking at how do we keep you feeling your absolute best with your vitality, your energy, and all these things that you're looking for. So we interpret your blood tests differently, and we do different testing that might help us to help you feel better. So for example, here's a patient who came in with feeling tired, irritable. She couldn't sleep very well but her blood tests were all normal. Now, I can look at blood tests that are technically normal and tell you exactly what's wrong still because I'm looking for the optimal range. I may proceed into saliva testing, for example, and on this, case, on this patient, her morning cortisol is on the low, low end. Of course, she's starting her day with an empty tank of gas. 
The other thing I want you to notice is that in the evenings, her cortisol is rising. You can see that trend up. That is actually very dangerous. It explains her insomnia, but the actual thing is that she's at higher risk for heart attacks. She's at higher risk for dementia. Pretty interesting, isn't it? And this is why your blood test can be normal, but there'll still be other things going on that we can explain and reverse. It was interesting that someone in the early 1900s said this, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest her or his patients in the care of the human frame, in a proper diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. Thomas Edison, 1847 to 1931. This is confusing to you, but this is exactly where in functional medicine we start with patients. Looking at your liver, which processes toxins and all of your hormones and anything that you're subjected to. So whether it's your body lotion or your house cleaning or the gasoline or whatever you breathe in, all of these things go through your liver. And um, I hope you're confused, but I hope you're impressed too, because this is how complex your body is. And the only way we use this in traditional medicine is to look at how do drugs work in your body. But notice that drugs are going to be affected by everything else too. I promised you the truth about aging and hormones. You age because your hormone levels decline. Your hormone levels do not decline because you're aging. And this is very contrary to what I learned in medical school. And I, mean, I did a residency position in obstetrics and gynecology. I wrote hormones in a menopause clinic, and I had no idea. This, the thing is, if we want to reverse aging, we want to look at hormone balancing. If we want to regenerate you, we want to look at hormone balancing because when your hormones are in balance, your tear down and your build up states are in balance. If you are stressed, for example, the tear down state is higher than your build up and repair state. So looking at hormone balance will affect arthritis will affect tendonitis will affect how well you heal from things to regenerate we can use uh, technology like platelet rich plasma for joints and ligaments and injuries even skin rejuvenation this is um, technology that's available and completely natural Here's a website for you new rules for better living.com I've got an email series through there that I'll give you more details about glycation and blood sugar and things to eat. I, I want to just put everything together now for you and um, show you how I look at you. So I, I, I ask you to think about yourself as a triangle. And uh, we're very good at looking after your physical body. And I think you are too. You know about exercise and movement and resting it and feeding it and all of that. Um, most people come to me for hormone balancing. But hormones are actually chemical messengers that control every important function in your body, from mood to appetite to fat burning to fat storage to sleep to whatever function it is that you want and whatever symptom you have that's going on. Hormones control and regulate all of that. Being chemical messengers, they operate in your body's biochemistry. Your biochemistry is where the magic of hormones happens. It is affected by so many things. Excuse me. In the old days, it was just nutrients and genetics that influenced your biochemistry. Today, it's things like the herbicides and pesticides and coloring and chemicals in the food that you eat. It is in your environment, the air quality inside your home, outside your home, everything that you put on your body from shampoo to face cream to nail polish, cologne, deodorant, whatever it is. Um, home care, what are you cleaning your home with? What are all the chemicals that you're exposed to?
Then there's habits and hobbies, and not the obvious ones like smoking and alcohol, but what about things like renovating and painting and dirt biking and working with glues and scrapbooking and whatever it is that people do. They all have chemical exposures in them. Then there's medication. So think about taking medication that um, will go through your liver and affect your biochemistry as well. So when you have all of these things affecting your biochemistry, your hormones are going to be affected as well because you have to use them within a biochemistry that's now being affected by all these multiple factors. And then as always, I teach all my patients that your mental, emotional, spiritual domain is critical to your well-being because when you have stress you make more stress coping hormones and the more stress you have the more hormones you'll make the more hormones you make the more nutrients you use up and so you're ending up in a state of nutrient depletion without nutrients it's going to be difficult to make more hormones in fact you cannot so think about the fact that as you use hormones you're getting depleted the more stress you have, the more depleted you get. What this means to you is that you're running on empty and your body is running out of the very fuel that it needs to keep functioning. It doesn't show up on the blood test. So your tests look normal even though you don't feel normal. I hope that makes sense and it's clear. I want to say thank you to my physician partner, Dr. Shabnam Daskar, because this is her puzzle. And I really love it because it shows you how intricate everything is. And when I say everything is connected to everything else, you can see it from your genetics and how, how your genes express themselves, from your gut health to your nutrition to the food choices. You can see that inflammation affects everything. Data from wearable devices. We now have Fitbits and Jawbones and things like that that can give you an amazing insight into how your body is functioning. Um, stress, omics means proteomics, transcriptomics, genomics. These are all new areas of study that affect how everything works together in your body. Through functional medicine, we're going to look at all of these pieces of the puzzle. And looking at the pieces of the puzzle, I mean, I have patients coming and telling me about books that they've read and how they're just going to follow this and it's going to change their lives. And it's not actually giving them the results yet, but, you know, it might just. And, and, and I bring this up because of the puzzle, because of the triangle I shared with you. You're not going to get the same results because you're not like anybody else. And sure, if you lived in Okinawa and you were an Okinawan and you had the genes of an Okinawan, it might work for you, but you're in North America surrounded by different toxins in a different environment with different stresses and different ways of viewing your stress even. So it's not going to give you the same result. It might give you some result because it's pushing you toward a healthier lifestyle. And there are certain things across the board that make a difference. But for you to get results, you need a customized, personalized program that's taking you into consideration with everything that makes you, you. We said that you age because your hormone levels decline and your hormone levels do not decline because you're aging. And that's contrary to what I learned in medical school. What do you think are some of the symptoms of low testosterone? Is anybody there to answer? <laughs> okay, actually, in the interest of time, I'm just looking at the time. I'm not going to take questions right now and comments. So low testosterone, think grumpy old man syndrome, right? So uh, muscle fatigue, general fatigue, irritability. Uh, men will say my waistline is growing. My belt size is changing. Uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be. And then the obvious thing, like low sex drive right? Um, testosterone, in an Italian study, I believe it was, was given to men intravenously while they were having a heart attack and it dilated blood vessels. We know that testosterone manages blood sugar level and improves the uh, control of a, a diabetic man's blood sugar. 
levels. So testosterone is not just what everybody thinks about when it comes to like, oh, it's about sex drive and erectile function. It is so much more. We know that uh, female lawyers, for example, uh, there was a, a study done on them and their performance in court, and they found that they had more mental agility and better outcome in their uh, arguments in the time of their cycle that testosterone was optimal. So it has huge mental effects. Progesterone, does anybody know what low progesterone does? I mean, in when I did obstetrics and gynecology, there was just a carrier pregnancy, and then it was, if you had a uterus, we gave it to you, but if you didn't, then we didn't. Well, did you know that progesterone receptors are in your bone? Progesterone's called a neurosteroid. Uh, just on the bone thing, Progesterone works on the cells that help you build up bone, not just on like estrogen, where we think it's important for bone density, but estrogen only works on the cells that stop bone from breaking down. So you need both. And you need testosterone because it works on the uh, fibr fibrils in bone that help with the tensile strength. So testosterone is important for bone too. And it's not just any one thing. So just taking estrogen to fix your low bone density is not going to be everything. Back to it being a neurosteroid, what does that mean? Neuro to do with brain. Progesterone has huge calming effects on your brain. Uh, low progesterone associated with PMS. Think psycho, you know, that word that starts with B. Uh, <laughs> right? Have you, have you ever met someone who's crazy at that time in their cycle? Well, yeah. Uh, low progesterone. Progesterone regulates cycles. Progesterone regulates the ability to carry a healthy pregnancy from bone to brain to mood. So a symptom of low progesterone would be anxiety. A symptom of low progesterone is poor sleep. It's not just for women who have a uterus. I touched on estrogen, um, sexual function for women, but bone and brain functions as well. D-H-E-A-S. This is not a hormone too many people talk about, but I like you to think about it as the youth and longevity hormone. We know that mammals who make higher amounts of D-H-E-A live longer. They have longer lifespans. But important to you is DHEA affects your immune system. DHEA affects muscle to fat ratio. DHEA, one of the most common things I hear from patients when we replace DHEA and get it into balance is, I have a sense of well-being, and I never understood that until I took it myself. Thyroid hormone. What are low thyroid hormone symptoms? Feeling colder than everyone else around you, so cold intolerance, cold hands and feet, dry hair, skin, and nails, your hair falls out, um, constipation, menstrual cycle irregularities, infertility, mood disorders, uh, constipation, I hope you're noticing that low thyroid affects almost every system in your body. I totally left one important thing out about thyroid. Weight gain. Weight gain out of proportion to what you're eating. The inability to lose weight regardless of what you do that's healthy. So you're dieting, you're eating less, you're exercising more, you're doing everything possible, and it's not working. That's low thyroid hormone. Now, are you noticing another thing? That for all of the symptoms I'm mentioning, they're not unique to any one hormone. And there's a lot of overlap. Now, let's go to cortisol. What's a low cortisol symptom other than energy? Cortisol helps you burn fat in the uh, sense that it'll help you release stored energy. So if you're low on cortisol, you may not be able to release stored fat. It gives you brain fog when it's low. It, you're tired, yes. Cortisol affects your immune system. So think of all the immune system dysfunctions we have. Everything from psoriasis and autoimmune diseases to cancer. I'm not talking just coughs and colds and runny noses here. Immune system dysfunction, asthma, allergies. Is that, are you going wow? I hope you are, because that's how far reaching low hormones. It affects everything. It affects your functioning. It affects your brain. It affects everything. 
And the solution is not just running out and getting a prescription for hormones. If there's anything I wanted you to get out of everything we've talked about this evening, it's that you need optimal biochemistry. You need an optimal digestive system. I'm, I'm brought in your stomach acid for a reason because digesting amino acids gives you the building blocks for hormones. And I, and I want you to think about everything in relation to everything else. So how many of you want to look like this in your future? I mean, I'm going to be like this when I meet you. I mean, of course, I'm not going to be Caucasian, but I am going to be riding a bike like that, okay? <laughs> so what is health to you? What does it look like? Because the World Health Organization says that health is the absence of disease. But is that good enough for you? Is it good enough to just not be sick? Or is there something about health? vitality, the ability to do whatever you want to do on your terms. What I notice in my practice is that people try to be healthy, but they don't even know what it looks like. And I want you to take a few moments now, just as we're wrapping up, we've got a few minutes left here, 12 minutes exactly. Um, what does it look like to you? How will you know you have good health? What are you able to do? And then the next step would be, why do you want to do that? See, what we know is that when you have an emotional connection, like look at this couple above, it's couple time. She's not just alone having fun on the bike. And I'm pretty sure she could. But if you attach it to being with someone that's important to you, you're more likely to stick the course. So what does it look like? And why do you want it? Okay, so I'll give you about 30 seconds more. And here's some notes for you. Make it specific. Find your emotional attachment to your goal. And understand what it's worth to you. Okay, so here's uh, something that I've realized just preparing this talk for you is that good health is not accidental. It is absolutely on purpose. And I look around at the 75 and 80-year-olds. I mean, just today we had an 80-year-old in our practice. And we have many, many patients who you would call elderly if you thought about them. But when you see them, they're far from elderly. So, you know, I have Bob, who's 75. He plays tennis almost every day. He ballroom dances three times a week. And he says, I play with people in their 50s. I don't tell them my age. Uh, but I want you to know I couldn't have done this without hormones and energy boosters. And the energy booster he's talking about is the monthly intravenous nutrient therapies that he comes for to keep himself repleted. He gets that the more active he is, the more nutrients he uses up, and that his diet and taking vitamins vitamins isn't enough to keep him as active as he wants to be. I talked to you about Gina, who's going back to work as a psychologist at age five. We have couples who are enjoying their lives more than ever, walking, hiking, being active. Uh, we have um, very, very many patients who set the example of what it's like to live into their future, the future that they worked so hard for. Are you working hard? Are you saving up for your future? Are you planning to retire one day to do some kind of volunteer work, spend time with your grandkids, uh, be with your spouse and do all the things that you're too busy to do now? The fact is you've got to put some effort into it right now. Uh, it doesn't just happen. All of these people have been committed to their health for decades. They didn't just wake up here at 78 years old feeling great. So I want to share with you uh, Total Health Renewal. Total Health Renewal is a program that I've created after 10 years of practicing functional medicine. And it's because I see the successes and I know what people have to do to get there. 
I, I see the couples. Um, I have a couple who came to me at 49 years old going, if this is what it feels like to be 49, we can't even imagine being 50. I mean, what on earth are we going to do if we're too tired to travel? We've worked so hard. We've saved so much. We've built our own companies and different things, but we can't do anything with it. So the point is you want a future that has health so that you can enjoy your life. Um, the point is that health comes from education as well as action. And it's harder to take the action without the education. And I see that every day. I've got patients who have been with me since the start 10 years ago. And every visit, I have this intention to share with them about, you know, the latest science on cancer prevention or some new um, fact about environmental medicine and toxicology or uh, heart disease or whatever. And then we get so focused on their life, their health, their lab tests, their hormones, adjusting their medication and all of that. And then I've got no time to educate them. And the thing that patients say to me the most is, I wish I could just sit with you for days and you could just tell me everything you know. I wish I could follow you around and see how you do things. Now, I'm not perfect. But I work at it, and I, and I look to improve and be better each year than I was before, each month than I was the month before. And I put all of this together into an online coaching program. So every important topic is shared with you in the detail that you need to be able to make actionable steps. Um, we look at your labs, we work with you, and we help you customize it. At the end of the day, what's going to happen is you're going to understand what to have as a discussion with your doctor. You're going to know how to put your own health together. See, at the end of the day, you're in charge of your health. There's nobody. It's not your doctor that, that's in charge of your health. It's you. You get the decisions, and it comes from having the education. So I'm going to give you some steps because I want tonight to have been useful for you. And here's from the education I shared with you. Remember the triangle and the biochemistry that your hormones work in your body's biochemistry? Step one toward a healthy aging and longevity would be lower your toxic burden. Clean up your biochemistry. Before you clean it up, start lowering your exposure. We talked about some hidden places that you may not even have thought of, right? The air quality inside your home, for example. Dry cleaning is another thing. Underarm deodorant, whatever it is in that area of biochemistry that we chatted about. Fuel. Food can fuel your body and its function, or it can feed disease. There are new rules to healthy eating. Told you about cholesterol. But what are some of the new rules? I have patients eating um, healthy yogurt. Why is it healthy? Because it's low fat and it's filled with good bacteria. There's probiotics. Well, every time we have a low fat food, we're removing fat and replacing it with sugar. Sugar is far worse for your health and ruining your healthy aging than fat. In the New Rules uh, series, so at newrulesforbetterliving.com, I talk to you about sugar and glycation and everything you need to know. So please download that. And just choose high-quality fuel. Here's um, a bit of advice. If it looks like something that God or Mother Nature made, eat it. Mother Nature did not present you with a slice of gluten-free bread or pasta. She presented you with the grain from which it's made. Our family is grain-free and dairy-free. Um, but you don't have to do that. Just try to make a conscious effort that 80 to 90% of the time, you eat food the way it grew. People are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to health and are treated by the health industry, which pays no attention to food. And I thought that was a pretty accurate summary. The food industry is out to create addicts to Cheerios and instant oatmeal and all of these kinds of things. I say, don't do it. You want to live a healthy, long, active, prosperous life? 
eat whole food. When diet is wrong, medicine is of no use. When diet is correct, medicine is of no need. Try it. I'm down to three minutes. I'm going to ask you to consider your body as a car. So here we have a car exploding. And this is supposed to be the scoop on poop. In my world, your digestive system is the most important organ system in your body. I'm going to send you the slideshow if you wish. Just pop us an email. I have to apologize. We typically will have a list of everybody who registered for the webinar. And that list has completely been eaten up by gremlins. So I don't know who you are if you're here, if you registered or... I have no way. I, I'm just hoping there's someone listening to me right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, pop us an email. Let us know that, and and I will send you this slide show. Okay. There's a bunch of things here that I'm going to have to uh, skip. I'm going to close with this. Health happens on purpose. And the biggest cause of failure to achieve health goals is the ability to stay on track. And we fail to stay on track because we lack support and we lack education. That's why I created the um, Total Health Renewal and all of our online health programs. We have in-person programs. That's the most classical way that people will work with us. And we have patients all over the world. And whether it's Asia, or Peru and South America, or Egypt, or London, England, we have patients from everywhere. And they typically will do um, online visits with us. We have secure video conferencing. And many people will travel in to see us, and they have executive health assessments with full functional medicine lab reviews. And uh, we plan your path towards success. Uh, for every plan and program that we have, we have pay payment plans, and many things are covered by benefits too. Here's what I know. A lot of people sign up for online trainings. In fact, only 30% of people who sign up actually show up. The rest may or may not sign in. They have the good intentions, but I think you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm guilty of this as well. And then you sit on the fence because it means spending money on your health. And I'm just going to be honest with you right here up front. Um, we charge money. Uh, we devote 30 to 50 hours a month to education of ourselves between our director of med medical education and myself so that we can bring you the best latest science and keep you safe not everyone does that a weekend course in hormone balancing does not keep you safe in the long term i saw a patient today who's worked with a functional medicine clinic for three years and feels worse now 50 some thousand dollars later that's a lot of money. We don't even charge close. <laughs> I'm teasing. Maybe we should. No. Um, you can invest as little as $147 with us and leave with renewed health. Um, if you're sitting on a fence and you're not sure what you want to do, you're not sure you want to invest, this is a small investment to make to gain a new level of health. And it's 30 days of coaching. And it includes Mastering Your Metabolism, Lifestyle, and Cookbook that I wrote. I love to cook. I would never be on a diet. But I promise you that you'll have more energy and a trimmer waistline at the end of these 30 days if you follow what I recommend. So if you're sitting on the fence, pick this one. If you're pretty sure from listening to me about who we help and all the things that we can solve, all the medical and problems that you have in your life that are affecting you, health problems, I don't mean other problems. <laughs> um, I have 11 seats available September 13th. 
this is the level of effort. See, I put it into levels of effort, my <laughs> minimal medium effort. So here your medium effort is attend the clinic, drink some wine with me, have dinner that I've cooked for you, uh, get some education, read a book, and leave with an action plan that we create that you'll learn how to customize for yourself. This event fee is applied to any clinic program that you choose, and so you're pretty much drinking with me for free if you decide to move on into another program. And the fee for that is $197. It includes the lifestyle and cookbook that I wrote. Um, and again, your fee is applied toward any program. And then there's the total health renewal. Medium high level of effort. And <laughs> I know because people are at different places. I have to meet each of you for where you're at. Um, it's a total value of $2,500. The investment is $1,750. And that sounds like a lot, but I'll ask you, what is your health worth to you? And what will, you, what will it cost you when you're like the patient I saw last week who had a stroke at 57 years old? What happens when you can't use your arms anymore? What happens when your brain is now impaired? What happens when you can't care for yourself, dress yourself, or go back to work? What happens if you're 52 years old and you have a heart attack and you can't work anymore? Game over, right? Um, it's an investment in your entire future. 12 topics one hour coaching in each topic with questions and answers, online support, and 12 one-to-one -one visits by secure video conferencing to cover the relevant blood tests per topic. So you will get the complete functional medicine assessment, all of the blood tests, and every session that we teach you, I meet you after that and go through the relevant labs to that. I will email you if you ask me, for more information on this program as I get that it's not for everyone. I'll tell you this much, this program is for everyone. It's to get you started. It's to get you loving it. It's loving health. I want to show you how easy this can be. I've only been doing this for 10 years. <laughs> I tease, right? It, it took me 10 years of doing this to find it easy. I I've spent time crying in a grocery store trying to do my shopping. Um, it's not easy when you're used to doing things a certain way. And I've got all my 10 years of experience, all of my education to help you make this easy. So if you do nothing else, join me on this program. And for those of you who are fed up and frustrated with how you feel, then join me on this one. I promise you, you won't regret it. And I'll tell you this, if you don't get results from this program, We'll give you a 100% money back guarantee on this one, that if you have zero results, you've got nothing out of this program, you just tell me and we'll refund you. That's how much I want to help you because I'm tired of seeing young people lose the rest of their lives. Um, I could tell you just story after story, but I'll leave you with this one. I have a patient who came to me and said, you have to see my husband. You, you have got to help him. I think he's going to have a heart attack. And I said, I can't see anybody who doesn't want to see me. And she said, I'm so worried about him and he's my whole life. We have five kids and we have this business and whatever. And I said, sorry, don't do that. She said, please order his labs. And I said, no. Three months later, she asked me the same thing. And I gave in and I gave her the blood test form for this man who I had never met. And I said, make sure that he at least come see me for five minutes so I'm ordering blood tests on someone I know. Many, many months went by and I didn't see her again. And the day that she showed up, I will never, never forget it. I mean, I looked into her empty eyes. I looked at this face that was there, but no one was home, if that makes sense. I thought I, I, I was seeing a ghost of a woman I used to know. And I knew, I, I knew immediately what had happened. And she was 37 years old, a widow, and five children to raise. 
Today she is 42 years old. She has never gotten over grieving this man that was her whole world. Her children have no father. I'm not saying I could have saved him, but you can save you by making the right choices. You get to decide to find out before you get the disease rather than after. And you can only do that if you get off the fence and you do something. So I encourage you, I plead with you to do something different this time. Get off the fence, please, and join me on one of these programs. I enjoyed having you with me. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your communication. I'm seeing a bunch of questions here. Um, okay. Um, actually, I'll save questions, and I'll answer them privately after this. We're seven minutes after the end of our webinar, so thank you very much for your time and attention. I'm Dr. Natasha Iyer. Thank you.